Hey, we'd like to say it's good to see everybody here tonight. Thank you for being with us. Hope you've had a blessed day. Hey, I thank the Lord just to have the opportunity to be back in His house and to praise Him for being so good to us. Uh, had a good service this morning. The Lord just blessed. Looking forward to tonight. Brother Russell's going to be preaching for us. You pray for Brother Russell. I asked him today at lunch if he would preach for us, and he said he would. So you remember him in prayer. We love using our young men and letting them take part in our service. It uh, gives them a chance to preach and gives God a chance to show them just what it's like. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. And so you pray for him. Also remember Brother Zach, my son, he's over at Hickory Grove. He got asked to preach tonight. Uh, I'm going to start monitoring his calls. Amen. Uh, so I can handle this Sunday preaching. Amen. But no, I'm kidding. It's a real blessing when folks call and they want to use your kids. And I, uh, Brother Zach told me, he said, Daddy, the man asked me to come. I said, well, He said, What am I supposed to tell him? I said, Son, you don't work for Daddy, you work Amen. for God. You Amen. tell him you'll be there. Amen. Tell him you'll be there. And I love the Lord, and I thank him for being so good. I uh, want you to remember Miss Kendra's daddy. Did he get to come home? Yeah. Remember Brother Steve Wilson? Pray for him. Uh, remember Brother Jimmy and Jennifer and them? Jimmy wanted me to let y'all know that they were having to move Megan back into school, and they probably wouldn't get to be here tonight, but he wanted y'all to pray for them. Pray that God would help him get them back in school and get everything back on track. Uh, Diane Jenkins called and uh, she's wanting you to remember Dorena. Dorena is in Northeast Georgia Hospital. Uh, she's up there having some complications with her pregnancy. And also her little boy, Jaden. Uh, Jaden's got something wrong with his eye. He's going to have to have surgery to do something to fix it. And she wants you to pray for that. And Zach Watson's wife, Julie, uh, she wants us to pray. She's wanting to be an RN. And she took her test last week, and she hadn't found out whether she passed it or not. They haven't posted it or not. And she's, she says, I'm praying and I'm believing. But she's like that man in Mark chapter 9. She said, Preacher, help me pray for my unbelief. Amen. Help me with my unbelief right there. So you remember them. Anybody else got a prayer request tonight? Frankie, I continue to remember Doug's family. Hey. Let's remember that. That's right. Let's remember Miss Cindy. Amen. Brother Frankie, I know y'all remember Jason. He uh, made it to Ohio safely, but he will be there for two weeks. He will not be returning home until uh, August 19th. And I know it's going to be rough on him to be away from us for that, for that long and away from church for that long. And also, I ask y'all at church to remember um, Tanya and Brad Westmoreland. They're going into surgery on the 19th. Um, Tanya is able to give Brad one of her kidneys. Um, so both of them will be out of commission for a while during that surgery. Amen. So let's remember that. Anybody got an unspoken request tonight? Let it be known by raising your hand all over the house. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and we're going to ask Brother Glenn, if he will, to lead us to the Lord in prayer. And we'll go further with the Yeah. 
this world my home secures he will my shield and portion me as long as I can endure my chains are tonight, the first thought that went through my head when Brother Zach was talking about going to Hickory Grove is, I'm going to be the only one Frankie sees between now and church tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also the only fairly intelligent, fairly confident 25-year-old that left their Bible in the sound booth. Uh, but, but I told Frankie last night, I don't understand how, I just know that he does. Marsha and David's son was at their house tonight. I said, Josh, you need your Bible. Man. I, I got to preach tonight. I, I don't have anything to study out of. And Josh, thank goodness, had one that he had left plentiful notes in. Um, and we're going to be in Mark chapter 11 tonight, verses 11 through 26. And... Uh, I want to go to the Lord in prayer one more time before I get rolling. Bless you. Father, I just... You challenged me at, at Revival this week about my humility, Lord. Father, that all I can ask tonight, Father, is that if you, you don't do anything else, Lord, just let me be a humble servant unto you tonight. Bless you. Father God, I just ask that as I stand here, these people don't see me. They don't hear me. God, they'll hear from heaven tonight, Father. And Father, I'm just, I'm just the clay. I'm just the vessel. 
Lord, to bring your word to them tonight, Father God. And I just ask your blessing. And Father, I'd be remiss not asking blessing for Brother Zach, Lord, because I know he's doing the same for me. Father, be with him at Hickory Grove tonight. And Lord, just let him be a humble servant filled with his calling, Lord. Lord, just, just light us both on fire, Lord, that people might see you, Father. Hide us both behind the cross, Father, that, that we might just do what you ask us to do, Father. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, I had a completely different message until about 2.30 this afternoon that I've been working on. And um, again, I don't know how. Let's know he does. I'm reading from Mark chapter 11, verses 11 through 26. The Bible says, And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple, and when he had looked round about upon all things, and now that eventide was come, he went out into Bethlehem, Bethany with the twelve. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came. If happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of the figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man... Eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. And they came unto Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple, and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers, and the seats of them that sold doves, and would not suffer that any man should carry out any should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught, saying unto them, is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer? But ye have made it a den of thieves. And the scribes and chief priests heard and sought how they might destroy him, for they feared him, because all the people were as astonished at his doctrine. And when evening was come, he went out of the city. In the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remember it, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou curse is withered away. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you, should, you desire, and when you pray, Believe, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when, he's, and when you stand praying, forgive if ye have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive your trespasses. If ye do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. And I had a nice, nice peaceful, easy Sunday night message about prayer um, that I'd I love this passage. It's, it's one of my favorites. Um, and it, it so often reminds me of the power of prayer and how we should pray. And I was all prepared to talk about that. But as I read the first part of this passage, that little still small voice that we hear sometimes asked the question, why did Jesus curse the tree? Blessing. Well, see... The tree, like a lot of Christians, appeared fruitful. See, with a fig tree, the leaves appear after the fruit. So Jesus, seeing this fig tree afar, would have thought, well, there's leaves. There must be figs. There must be something to eat. But the tree wasn't fruitful. And see... We're judged by the fruit that we bear. Right. So, just what I was shown, Jesus cursed the fig tree because it wasn't fruitful. It wasn't doing its purpose. Right. And so many Christians today sitting in church and, well, that's the end of the story. Yeah. They just sit here. Bless you. Bless you. Few. Few. Psalm and I don't know 
Walmart. That's a big thing here. Um, you wouldn't know if a lost man were to be, let's take last night for example, sitting in a parking lot of a church. Just nobody knew why he was there. But when asked to, he'd like to come in and get something to eat. A blessing was brought to him. A blessing that any of us could have just gone with the times and been a little suspicious of a man sitting in a car in a church parking lot that we hadn't seen before. But thank the Lord that He led that man here to last night. That once again, a, a servant of Him could bear a little more fruit. And, and that's what our challenge is. See, we're not... It doesn't end with coming to an altar and receiving salvation. It, it doesn't end there. That's just the beginning. That, that's not... That's barely the beginning. That's, 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 that's a very finite beginning. See, because if you look at the rest of the New Testament, we're called to love the Lord. Okay? That would seem to be alright. Calling Him as your Savior. Love Him. And, well, that could be the end of the story. But at the end of Matthew, we're given the Great Commission to go out and make disciples of all nations. Not Auburn, Georgia, not Winder, Georgia, not Bethlehem, not Loganville, not Houston. All nations. Race, creed, color, doesn't matter. Two co workers of yours that, that are seeking out the path of Islam. I'm preaching myself, y'all. We're called to make disciples of them too. Yeah. And and I'll stand here and humbly say, I've, I've failed. I've, I've sat and talked with these guys for three weeks at lunch and thrown two cents in here and two cents in there. But haven't ever come and just boldly laid my feet on that line and said, this is where I stand and it ain't changing. Y'all can... And, and here's why. And... And... Again, so many of us are like that fig tree. I just... I, I can't get over what, where I, when I just saw this. I, I've read this passage hundreds of times. It's where I go when I feel down. And, and we, we have so many opportunities in our day-to-day -day walk from where I work, we have a lot of homeless veterans on the corners. They know people are going to be coming in and out of work. They know at this Brave Stadium, there's 2,000 people out there making a fairly decent living for themselves. How much of a blessing would it be if, if we just would have stopped and, and just prayed with them? Right. Right. Don't have to have cash in our pockets to give them. Right. Just pray with them. Even just thanking them for what they've done. Bless. To be the blessing that they need that day. And, and yet, we get in our routine, we get in our tunnel vision, we go to work, we make our money, go home, Eat some supper, go to bed. But I love that Zach Watson during revival really called us out on what's at the center of our faith. Hey. See, because if we humble ourselves and put Christ in the center, we see these opportunities when they arose and not 20 miles later down the road thinking, man, I really should have really done something there. Really could have really could have helped that man. 
that woman. We have, in our own families, you know, we have those that we fall on the floor in tears if they just darken the doors of any church. Not just our church. If they just darken the doors of a church, we fall on our faces in thanks to God. Yes, but when's the last time we reached out our hand? When's the last time we stepped up and said, Hey, we're having church. Why don't you come? Where's, where's our fruit? Where's the fruit that we're supposed to be bearing? Where is that? Where is that fruit? We're all covered in leaves. We're all pretty up. We've, we've done our part. We've come to the altar. We've accepted the Lord. We stand and sing songs. We raise our hands at the right times. We know when the preacher is, when, when the preacher takes that certain pause, we're blessing Lord. But when's the last time we really surrendered? I said, Lord, let your spirit wash over me today. When, when's the last time we said, Lord, just set my soul on fire? When's the last time we said, Lord, let me be the light today? Let me be that light on a hill that can be seen from miles around. When's the last time we said, Lord, just put some figs out there on my limbs? I don't know who they're meant for, but Lord, just give me the fruit that I may produce. Where's the last time we said, Lord, just let me be the one you use today? See, because I... And, and Frankie, I know you're going to agree. Elisha, I know you're going to agree. Doug, Dean, it's a humbling experience to think of where I have come from that the Lord might call this wretched sinner to stand up here and bring the Word to you tonight. Bless you. I, I get tore up thinking about it. Bless you. I get tore up the fact that I get to walk through the doors of a church sometimes. Think about my past and and, and the laundry list of people I've heard along the way in my short 25 years. That, I, don't, I don't deserve to, to be here. I'm just thankful that he saw fit for his son to walk up a hill called Calvary carrying an old rugged cross being beaten and spit on the entire way for me. And if it had been just me, he'd have been fine with that. But he did it for you too. And um, moving on a little further down, we find Jesus <coughs> kicking the merchants, selling things out of the temple. And that really, that had angered the priests. That angered the Pharisees. Boy, they got ill. But look at verse 17. He said, And he taught, saying unto them, It is not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Now that's a pretty simple statement. Some of the Pharisees and the priests should have known that the temple was a place to pray and get close to the Lord. So why did it upset them so much that he just pointed it out. Well, see the people selling stuff in the temple had to pay the priest for that right. They had to you know, grease the palms, if you will. And so when Jesus said, hey, not in my house, the priests were losing an income. Not only that, the priests lost their power. How many times do we not do something because it's not us? It's not me. How many times do we sit back and say, well, Lord, I can't do that? In case you were wondering, only the L and the I in that sentence were capitalized. 
and I was emboldened. See, because we try so hard to make it about us, we forget that there ain't nothing. Brother Larry, I could I could come down here and sit right next to you and preach to you till I was blue in the face. If I hadn't gone to the Lord in prayer, said, Lord, give me the words that Larry needs tonight. Bless. He was like, who's this crazy man talking all loud with me? <laughs> what, what is he trying to bring to me? See, I can't bring anything. Brother Doug, Dean, Elisha, we can't do it. See, we can, we can think, oh, I'm, I'm prepared. I've studied. I've, I've been so prepared. And the Lord will say, all right, cool. You're going to use the same verse, but you're not going to talk about that. Having about 2 o'clock this afternoon. And uh, we don't want to give up. We don't want to let this be the Lord's house because we want the glory. We want, we want the, the glory of saying, well, I, I led so-and-so to Christ. I got news for you. I preached about it a couple weeks ago. Didn't nobody take Paul down the Damascus Road but Jesus. And he set up a little personal meeting between him and Paul. And it got real personal. But Ananias didn't say, hey Paul, I'll come walk down the Damascus Road. There'll be something there for you. Ananias didn't tell Paul, hey, if you just pray this little prayer, everything's taken care of. Bless. Ananias said, Lord, you want me to go talk to Paul? You understand he probably came with the intent to kill me today. You, you saw what he did to Stephen. You saw him stand by and just watch rocks get hurled at his head. Why me? The Lord said, Man, nice, that ain't you. I'm just using you. See, we get so wrapped up in our power. We get so wrapped up in what we can do. We get so caught up in, in what we think the Lord can do with us. The Lord can can take a kid that left his parents' house <coughs> haven't done anything really all that wrong except be mean to his little sister. And three weeks out of his parents' house, you probably call him a drunk, and about a month after that, you could probably call him an alcoholic. Matter of fact, I'd, I'd put the label on myself. And he could lead him back to place in Nashville, Tennessee, an auditorium full of thousands of people who didn't know the other half. They just knew I was there. They didn't know that while I put on a smile when I was in Bible study with them, that inside I was tortured. And he can take that kid and through the power of a song, Hit him on the head with the hammer of conviction because he tried, he tried knocking on the door a few times. He tried, you know, grabbing me by the shoulder, saying, "Son, what are you doing?" Until finally, a big old hammer of conviction just rained down, and through tears. I choked out to my friend John. I, I got to talk to you. I don't know what else to do. He said I'd start with prayer and go from there. He said, but if you want after that, we'll still have lunch. My friend John Kishimoto was the first person that blessed God. I got to say, I got saved. That day, December 31st in Nashville, Tennessee. And he could take that 20-year-old kid 
five years later through heartbreaks and struggles, have him standing here before you tonight. It's not the route I'd have chosen. The route I'd have chosen would be sitting back there a little further than Donnie, trying to blend in and and just alright. Good preaching. What we eat. Then it ain't the route he had chosen. What route has he chosen for you tonight? What is that little tug you you felt at your heart? Maybe the last couple of weeks, maybe it started at revival. If there's if there's anything, I, I'm not done, but I, I, I feel led. Say, if there's something that's been tugging at you, the altar's open. Y'all ain't gonna bother me. I'm about like Zach. I can I can talk to anybody through anything. So if, if there's something that's been weighing on your heart, please, the altar's open. We have plenty of people to come and pray with you. Um, Bless. And as we look further down, we get to the part of the passage I really love. And I, I questioned whether I was going to get to preach it. And the Lord's saying, go ahead, son. Uh, he's talking to the Bible. He's explaining what happened with the fig tree. And Jesus looked at that fig tree and cursed it. said, no man shall eat from you ever again. And and yes, yeah, sure, Jesus is the Son of God, but he believed it was going to happen. He said it knowing it was going to happen. How many times have we come to the altar or in our quiet place where we pray and the Lord just, you know, help me with these bills? Maybe if you could spend that, send that special young lady or that young man along the way that you have picked out for me to. Share my life with. Lord, that'd be great. And we walk away thinking, I'll never see her. I guess I'm going to have to work some extra overtime to pay these bills this week. I don't even, I don't go any place to find that special someone. There's that I word again. It keeps popping up every time I think, every time we think about how we handle these things, I comes up again. But maybe if we just got down on our knees and said, Lord, I know it is in your will that I, that I can pay these bills this week. I know you have a plan, Lord. And Lord, just break my heart for your will. Lord, I know that you can handle it. Lord, I know that you have that someone picked out for me. God, give me the patience to wait until they come. God, guide my footsteps to where that place is that you have ordained for us to meet. And side note, it's probably not in the places that most of us go looking. Just two cents, that one's on the house. Um, but if, if I call Frankie and say, Tuesday night, and said, hey Frankie, I, I need your help with this. And I hung up the phone. And never in my mind, never in my heart did I expect Frankie to show up. Well, that's not a lot of faith. We're called to have faith in Jesus. We're called to have faith that He will deliver. So, praying like it's been done, not like it's going to happen. you got to pray like it has been done. Bless you. Ten years from now, five years from now, it's been done. See, when Adam and Eve ate the fruit in the garden, Jesus had been done. It was going to happen. He wasn't a backup plan. Jesus did, the Lord didn't look at Jesus and say, well, I never figured they'd actually mess that one up. So, uh, how do you feel about Calvary, son? No, that's not how it happened. Bless. 
And the Jews prayed and prayed and prayed for a Messiah. And they prayed that, like Frankie said this morning, this great man of battle was going to come in and the Roman Empire was going to fall and they would be oppressed no more. That this great man of battle was going to lead them against any conquerors that ever came. Well, because they prayed, I'm sure they probably believed a little bit that it was going to happen. They didn't pray like it had been done. They didn't pray and then look for the answer. See, a lot of times too, we pray and and Brother Kenneth, I, I asked to pray with you tonight. And and had I asked to pray, Brother Kenneth, you pray for me. I'm, I'm, I'm a little nervous tonight. Alright, I'm going inside. Where's the blessing? Brother Kenneth can't pray with me if I'm not there. We can't get the blessing if we're not looking for it. Now, we don't need to get set in our mind what the blessing is going to be. See, because we can pray, Lord, I, and Lord, I've seen them new Dodge Rams that they're trying to get off the lot there at Aikens. You know, my, my dad's got a white one, but I think charcoal gray would look real good part next to it. All the while, I was praying for a reliable way to make sure I could turn the key and I was going to get to work that morning. Well, Dad came home and said, So I got some new plugs and wires. Let's put them on your truck and see if that, that gets it running right. And it didn't all the way fix the problem. But you know what? That old blue oval Ford out there, getting a little ragged with age, but bless God I turn that key and I go to work in the morning. Amen. See, I prayed for a specific blessing. The Lord hated me differently. I'd missed a week at work being on vacation. I didn't have the money to pay for the stuff to fix my truck. I had a dad that loved me enough to give me what I was going to need to patch it together and hold it together until I could pay for the rest. We get so locked in on seeking a specific blessing. And so locked in looking for what we think is going to solve our problem. I thought the new truck, car note that yeah, I could afford, but wasn't going to be easy all the time. That was that was the blessing. I look back now, that car note that I was going to be able to afford, but it'd be a little hard sometimes. It's not a blessing. That's another challenge. It's another hardship. That's, 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 here we go again, praying about the finances. But, in my mind, every Sunday, every time the doors of this place are open, we should see parents up here praying for their kids. I'm 25, I'm sheltered from a lot, but I know this world is getting nuts. It is. I am scared to death to have kids and bring them up in this world. Bless. Don't be parents praying for the kids. I'll be kids praying for the parents. I'll be brothers praying for their sisters. Sisters praying for their brothers. Friends. For their friends. We all know who I'm talking about. We all know who's missing out of this group. How many times do we humble ourselves and get down on our knees and say, Lord, we just want to see them again. We just want to see them again. We can work on the rest of it later, but Lord, we just want to see them. We want them to be part of us again. 
We want our brother back. And yet, Sunday morning comes, Sunday morning goes, Sunday evening comes, Sunday evening goes. People who really fall under conviction come. But why do you have to be convicted to come to the altar? Why don't you pray? We're here in the presence of God. We're in the presence of the Holy Spirit. There's no better time to try to get a hold of Him than here. There's no better time to get on your knees and say, Lord, we just need a little help. We've tried it our way. We tried, hey man, hope we see you Sunday. Hey man, what are you doing Wednesday night? Hey brother, so and so is going to be in revival. It would be cool if you could come. When's it been? Hey Lord, you lead him to the time and place that will break his heart for you again. When's the last time we did that? Brother Glenn goes on. I'm almost done. See, we, we pray so often and then we doubt that it'll happen. We maybe don't pray with the conviction of somebody that's, that knows what we know. See, <clears throat> so I talked about that night in Nashville, Tennessee. And I, I prayed that night knowing that I had business to do with the Lord. And I knew what that business was. And I knew that if I prayed and really approached the throne in, in contriteness and brokenness over what I had done, that cross, that man that hung on that cross, it, that was taken care of. That was going to take care of the rest. That I wasn't going to have to live with that past anymore. That I could look forward and, and see a new future. One that doesn't end when I close my eyes in death. See, that's just the beginning. That's just the beginning. So tonight, if, if you haven't had that moment, if you haven't ever prayed that the Lord would, would come and just make things right, the altar's open. Maybe you have that person in your family, that person in your work life, that friend that that you just want to just want to pray for. The altar's going to be open. I don't know what Brother Glenn has planned for the invitation, but I'd I'd ask you to, to just Bless. do what the Lord would lead you to do. Let go of I. Let go of I and just cling to Jesus. And you'll be amazed at what can happen. Brother Frank Hamilton. Hey, while we stand, Brother Russell comes out front. <coughs> As Brother Glenn and them get ready to sing, I look at that pig tree and it has crossed my mind. Why? Why was there no pigs on that tree? Now, I know very little about gardening. I know very little about plants. I know very little. But I do know something that was not on the outside. It had all the features that a fig tree was supposed to have. So we know it was not on the outside of the fig tree. Because Jesus himself seen it, supposing that it had fruit. So we know it's not the outwardly part that matters. But it's that inwardly part that produces the fruits. See, too many of us are trying to clean up the outside. We're trying to prune the outside to make it look so good. When the reason we don't produce fruit is not on our outside, but it's on the inside. Fruit only comes from God. How do you know? Because Paul said, I'll plant. He said, a polis of water. He said it takes God to give an increase. For us to have fruit in our life, it has to come from God. Tonight, look at your own tree. Look at your life. That's what it represents. Are you producing the fruit that this young man talked to you about tonight? Are you, is there any fruit that can be taken from you? I, I immediately thought of Galatians chapter 5 where it says the fruits of the Spirit 
Can folks see love in your life? Can they see meekness? Can they see some long suffering? Granted, we need some of that kind of fruit today. I, I, I love it. Love some of that. Hey, what kind of fruit are you producing? Or is there any fruit at all? Same, Brother Glenn. Are you looking for a place to worship God in spirit and in truth? Hello, I'm Frankie Green, pastor of Trinity Baptist Church in Auburn, Georgia. We would like to invite you to be in our service with us. Sunday school starts at 10 with morning worship at 11. Sunday evening worship begins at 6 and Wednesday night prayer service at 7. We are a King James Bible-believing, fundamental, independent Baptist church reaching out to those who need a special touch from God. For more information, you can visit us at TrinityBaptistAuburn.com or on Facebook at Trinity Baptist Church Auburn. We welcome you to Trinity Baptist Church where you will become part of a family.